incarcerated and people know you're innocent, that tends to empower them. Right. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That tends to empower them. If they know you're a dirt body, then that, that doesn't empower anyone. So I think that it's important because it's, it's actually followed throughout the years that people who end up getting incarcerated, their followers and other believers tend to become more empowered more bold, especially if they believe that you've been incarcerated in, inappropriately. Now, sometimes this doesn't always work to the positive because I don't know, some of y'all might remember y'all, you know, around Sister Ursula Day, <laughs> you, uh, you probably remember Charles Manson. When Charles Manson was incarcerated, yeah, his yeah. followers became that much more empowered. They, they, they felt like he had done nothing wrong, even though he had cut babies out of pregnant women and, and so forth. He didn't do that. That was legend. Allegedly. <laughs> that was someone in his party that did that. Somebody else who did that, yeah. yeah. So, you know, they, they became more empowered. So this thing actually works, but it doesn't always work for the good. Part of the reason why it works is because, like I said, I think when people feel like you are being unfairly punished, they then cry out the more. And here is a situation where this, and it goes, the important thing that I want you to get out of this is that this happened over 2,000 years ago. Okay, Here we are in modern times, and we're seeing some of the exact same things take place. So there is there's a mindset. So here Paul is saying he's encouraged because the people, they're not you know, they're not running in fear and intimidation. They're actually being empowered by his incar incarceration and they're actually spreading the gospel. He goes on to say it in verse 15. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. How do you think they're going to stir up trouble for him if he's already... How are they going to make trouble for Paul, who's in jail already, by preaching the gospel? How does that work? You think that maybe that some of the people who were preaching the gospel may, I don't know, protest or cause uh, some kind of outpouring and maybe they'll be punished for a while he's in jail because of what's going on outside? Perhaps? Okay. Somebody else. I think they try to cause confusion. That's some that was even uh, preach Christ even in envy and strife that they probably was trying to get it for their own uh, satisfaction okay. anybody else?
basically it's jealous of. I can't imagine what church folks doing that back in the day. Not the saints. Not the saints. And all of those things can be possible. Let me give you a different scenario. Let's say Big goes to jail. He's a leader, and I don't really like him, and I'm hoping that they punish him. So he went to jail. The reason he went to jail was because <coughs> he was out there protesting that people should get better wages for their pay. He ends up going to jail. I don't like him. So what I do is, in order to make trouble for him, I go out and I start saying, and they need to give us more medical insurance, and they need to allow us to have a free house. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I'm piggybacking off of him, but I'm basically saying people should get more. What it does is, on one side, it looks like I'm his friend, because I'm out here speaking for human rights, too. But really what I'm doing is I'm hoping that the people who are the powers that be will say, see, what he started is going to get ridiculous. It's just getting more out of control. Let's nip this in the bud right now. Let's participate. Exactly. So they get to the place where they say, won't be long before they'll be wanting everything. We want to do something about We got to do something. And he's the man that we got. So, And he's the one who is the initiator. If you know anything about African American history, that's really what happened to Martin Luther King. Yeah. He started speaking about human rights and yeah. people yeah. getting fair shakes. Yeah. Somebody in the background was saying, hey, we need to squelch this. Otherwise, this is going to get out of control, okay? Everybody out there who was marked signs and hollering freedom and stuff, all of them were not out there for their benefit. All of them were simply not out there because they wanted to see things done. Because you got to understand that there were some African Americans who prospered from African American oppression. There's still African Americans who prosper That's from right. African American mm -hmm. oppression. So you see, everybody who was toting those signs and walking across those bridges and stuff, they were out there. And some of the radical stuff that came yeah. out of that time, the Black Panther movement and stuff like that, 